Geek Vibes Nation has made the switch to Anchor. Let me tell you a little bit about Anchor. It's the easiest way to make a podcast. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. Anchor will also distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more great podcast networks. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to Anchor FM to get started. In the ass. All right. Welcome, everyone, to an all-new episode of Much To Do About Nothing. I am your host, Jawan, joined by my co-host, Joel. What's going on, Joel? What up, Jawan? I'm excited to do this episode. I was really happy. You were like, thumbs up. We could do it Saturday. Um, Potting with you is always fun. I will say this. Very fun thing. I was going down the hole in YouTube, and I came across this video that this guy made maybe a few days ago. It was what would it have been like if Jordan and LeBron played together? So he did like a simulation on 2K. Guess who they got drafted to? Where? The Knicks. Both of them? Yeah, both of them. So what he did was he traded away our first for next year. Um, Mm -hmm. He traded that away to, I think, Chicago. Crazy enough. Um, So he brought in a high school LeBron in a uh, very young Jordan. Jordan still had his hair. LeBron right. still had his hair. Um, and he wanted to see how many rings the two of them could win together. Because Shannon Sharp and uh, Stephen A. were saying, like, oh, they'd win 11. So he did, like, a simulation. He didn't physically play any of the games. So it spanned, right. like, it spanned like, 14, 15, 16 seasons. They legit brought us – nine championships joel <laughs> <laughs> i was like oh my god that's like a wet dream for nick fans just having one of them we wouldn't even need both just I see one. It here. yeah um and here's the and this is the last thing i'm gonna say before we start here's the craziest stat guess how many defensive player of the year awards michael jordan had in that span of like 16 17 years how many 16 in a row, Joel. Defensive <laughs> player of the year? Defensive <laughs> player of the year. I'm oh, watching it, and I'm like, Jordan wasn't that good defensively to get defensive player of the year even four times. He only got it once. I'm sitting here, I'm like, that's weird. Um, but I will say the Knicks did some Knicks stuff. They traded away Mitchell Robinson to get Draymond. Um, at Draymond, and we had, like, Bobby Portis at our – it was weird. It was really weird. We obviously so had, to get, we had to get rid of RJ to get Jordan um, for that number one pick. But um, it was just fun to see a Knicks jersey hoisting multiple. Championship. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. Like, I, I'll say this. If you're a Golden State Warrior fan, like, you'll never understand how lucky you are. Um you achieved over the course of six years what we've been waiting for since Clyde. Um, so it's like, yeah. it's crazy. You should, you should never be upset, ever, 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 ever. Yeah, um, both fans either. They, they got six in a decade. So, yeah, and never Joel, bits again. We say this all the time. They very likely could have went seven or eight, and if not for the fact that um, I, I didn't really like how. Tibbs had that team set up, but the Bulls were giving Miami a run for their money till D Rose got hurt. Right. Um, so I'm like, you're relevant in modern day. <laughs> like, this fucking sucks, man. Jeez. They had Dwayne Wade come through there, Jimmy Butler, D Rose, Michael Jordan. Yeah. And we had all the chances. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're already ret- practically retired, Tracy McGrady. Yeah, I'm like, th- those are our highlights. Like, geez, man. People Half don't a season. how lucky they are. We did have Derrick Rose coming off of uh, – By the way, more- I will say, so Phil messed up the, the game plan that they were running up uh, from the beginning of the season till Christmas. Yeah. Uh, Derrick Rose was averaging 12 to 15 points a game, uh, which was uh-huh. shocking because it was like, I don't really think Derrick Rose is going to be mm-hmm. that good. And surprisingly, he and Melo worked out very well together. 
It was not yeah. as bad as you would have thought heading into the season. No, uh, he was he wasn't where he was, but he was he was slowly coming back, and he finally broke out in Minnesota when he went back to Minnesota. But and I'm mm -hmm. glad that he's kind of kind of found his groove again. Yeah, no, me too. Um, he shouldn't have. He shouldn't have like hurt Derrick Rose. Shouldn't have been how we saw his story end. Um, right. He definitely deserved better than that, and I'm glad he got to showcase that in Minnesota. That's actually. NBA, since quarantine has started, has been playing classic games, and he actually made it on uh, his, what was it, 50, 60 uh, point performance in Minnesota. That made it on as a classic game. The one where he started crying afterwards, yeah. yeah. Um, so that was good to see. And it was good to see that our Knicks made a couple of them. I was like, all right, that's what I'm talking about. I appreciate it. Um, but uh, I, yeah, I'm watching it right now. I got it in the background. Oh, the Derrick Rose game? No, the fucking the, – the, the draft thing. Oh, oh, the, the one I was just talking about? Yeah, I'm yeah. telling you, Joel, it's, it will <laughs> warm your heart but also make mm -hmm. you very depressed because it's like that will never happen to us. <laughs> like getting two players of that caliber. The fact that they were both in the same draft and they're like, oh, let's trade the number – for the number two pick as well. Yeah. To get both of them. That's hysterical. Yeah. Insane. And what's crazy is as you watch it, you'll see like they could have went 13 in a row for championships. But yeah. like the Raptors pulled off some crazy shit, Joel. They had Durant mm -hmm. plus Siakam plus Rudy Gobert. <laughs> <laughs> it's I don't I don't understand how it happened, man. Uh -huh. uh, but we guess guess what? We beat them. <laughs> oh wow. We weirdly beat them, but you're you're the gonna dynamic enjoy duo. Yeah, I was like, wait, Durant, Siakam, and Gobert? You got, like, three of the best defensive guys you could have right now on the same team. Um, but, no, definitely enjoy watching it as we do this video. You will love it. Um, and r you'll randomly just start laughing, and I'll be like, I understand. You don't even have to say it. I get it, Joel. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, shout out to Click. He has, a, he, has a, he has some good videos. Oh, for sure. And I have to thank Click you for pointing out to me. Because um, that's why I popped up, because I watched one of his videos. So it was like, oh, yeah. all right, let me watch this. Yeah, he has some crazy um, shit. Uh, all right, so let's tackle – you want to start with sports or you want to start with geek news, since we're already on sports? Uh, either one is fine. I don't care. I mean, we're on sports. Might as well just finish it. All right, let's finish sports then. Um, all right, so it looks like Nick's opened up their facilities. Um, yeah. And which is Back. good news. Um, I'll say this. The only thing that got me interested about the news of them opening back up their facilities is if Mark Cuban's proposed um, breakdown of how uh, the playoffs should be seeded actually yeah. works out. Joel, the Knicks actually have a fighting chance to make it into that tournament. Um, they're so not. We got included. Right. The they're problem. not. Because they were saying only two teams statistically were out. It was, like, the Warriors and somebody else. I can't remember who else. But you'd assume, like, probably, like, the Cavaliers or something. Um, yeah, the bottom four teams. Right. And luckily, we aren't the bottom four teams. It's luckily and not really lucky because it's, like, it's You're weird. A lottery. Or you you right. get a chance of fucking up a lottery if you don't get far. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I look at this two ways, man. We were starting to get into a groove before the season abruptly ended. Mm -hmm. um, I, would, I would be very interested, even if it's against the Bucks, and we'd probably get swept. I'd be All very right. interested to see how hard the Knicks play, how, uh, how well RJ looks, how well Knox looks, Randall, um, Mitch. I would like to see those guys get some playoff experience and to know that we got in by a technicality would be just as pleasing as if we actually earned it. <laughs> so mm. <laughs> you get playoffs. no complaints from me. You get no yeah. complaints from me. But how would you feel about it? I wouldn't complain. No, I wouldn't be upset at all about it. Um, but at the same time, you know, as much as I wouldn't mind um, seeing a playoff for last week, I don't know how far we would get, so it would make me nervous. Uh, some part of me is like, let's just get the lottery pick and take, take our chances there, then, then fuck it. Eliminated in the first round and ruin our chances at the number one pick, you know. Considering where now, especially with the way the, the, the lottery is now, where like 
fourteen percent for the the you know all three at the bottom instead of mm -hmm. last year it was a clusterfuck like people getting knocked out of the uh, out of the the, the final three it was it's kind of scary we got lucky that we ended up we're still in the top I mean in the bottom three so never know we can just jump right in there so but, I mean there's a part of me that that I would rather just go with that and add another young star and then worry about it next year but I would never complain about seeing more Knicks. Yeah, like and and to me, I think what's <clears throat> excuse me, I think what's underrated about young teams is playoff experience. Like you're not gonna tell me uh last year's playoffs didn't do something for the magic. Now, albeit mm -hmm. you could blame it on coaching, you could blame it on development, whatever you want to blame it on, that is good for those kids. Just like if the Nets didn't completely alter their uh their roster yeah. to fit Durant and Kyrie, that was great for them. And I think they would have responded very well under Kenny heading into this season. Um, mm. So, I mean, you never – like, that to me is is priceless. Like, albeit, do we want LaMelo Ball? Yes. Yes, we do. Desperately. But would me and Joel like to see the Knicks in the playoffs because we haven't in, like, the past five years? Yes. Yes. Well. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, we game? Yes, it was not in New York. Yeah, man. <laughs> like, come on. Are you serious? Um, so to me, I look at that and I kind of go, it's 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 priceless to have that experience to go in there. And I really think RJ would thrive. I think Peyton, if he could stay healthy, would thrive. Mitch would put up a few 15 to 20 point games. Um, I, I think they would really respond to it because everybody would be saying they don't deserve to be there. Everybody. Yeah. Oh, don't worry about this series. Milwaukee's gonna come in and and leave, and it's already a four zero sweep. And I would like to see how they respond to that. Um, how do you respond to everyone telling you this is a joke? Like no one's gonna watch this series. You're gonna get blown out. Um, how do you respond to that? Uh, now, would I have loved to have uh, Morris heading into a playoff series? Oh, you betcha, <laughs> because. Yeah. I'd feel way more confident with uh, with Morris than um, than Julius Randle, pretty much being our star. Um, but who knows? Maybe Mo Harkless wakes up. Maybe he gives us a ten to fifteen point game a few times out of the series. Uh, yeah. If we if we make it five games, I got no complaints. I got no complaints. I would say worth it worth it um but more specifically about this uh possible seeding is it would pit east against west um in early rounds it wouldn't just be best of the west versus the west best of the east versus the east it would mix and i've always said um that's what it should be like to me i get that people are like um well for years the east was weak so we'd just be having the west versus the west in the finals and i'm like technically the purpose of the finals is to have the best two teams facing off against each other. And I can tell you right now, I did not enjoy seeing LeBron uh, get completely embarrassed by the Golden State Warriors. It, it was not fun. Um, I enjoyed seeing Golden State versus the Rockets more than I did Golden State versus Cleveland. Um, so if you're telling me that was – like, picture jo – Joel, would you be upset if your finals this year was Clippers-Lakers? No. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> That's all yeah. I'm saying. Uh, but I wouldn't be mad if it was, you know, Lakers, Bucks, or Clippers, Bucks. Or, oh, of course. Vice versa, you know what I mean? Oh, of course, of course. I'm just saying if it pans out that it's West versus West. No, uh, I don't like West versus West. I like East West. I, I still I don't like that the All-Star game is not East West anymore. So, like, imagine. So, that's how I am. Uh, so you, you don't like the you don't like the way that they're uh, proposing this. I, I like I like East West. It's always been East West. I prefer East versus West. Interesting. All right. Um. Well. <clears throat> again, to me, I think the best way to structure the playoffs is always um, best best teams, <clears throat> best teams. Um, because there's just it's it's really sucks to watch <laughs> Raptors versus Orlando Magic. Uh, see Orlando put up a fight, but they they just they no they they don't belong there. Um, so to me, I, I think one or two things should happen. I've told you this numerous times. I think Adam Silver, <clears throat> excuse me, should find a way to um, 
if these franchises are going decades without playoff appearances, you got to step in. Like you have to step in um, and you got to figure something out because honestly it, it sucks going into every season in the past 10 years and saying, all right, the East is just top four, top five. The last three don't really matter. <laughs> they, it's just, they're here. Um, it, it just, it sucks. Cause you look at the West and you're like, damn, the West is like 10 deep. They're 10 deep. If the, if the Kings last year were in the East, they would have been where the magic were. They would have been in the playoffs. Um, so you look at it and you kind of just like, it's, it's unfortunate, but I get your point, man. I get your point. Yeah. Cause if the Knicks earned a spot <laughs> and they did yeah. best of the best, the Knicks would be out. <laughs> yeah. A lot. So I'm not, I'm not one to complain. I'll get my eighth seed. I'll get in. <laughs> Never know. <laughs> no, that is it. a good point. That is a good point. Um, all right. Before we get off of basketball, I want to ask you this. I argued this with Dom and my uncle on great debates this past Thursday. I was saying um, all-time starting five for your favorite NBA franchise. Obviously, we did that uh, last week with the Knicks. I was just mm-hmm. curious to hear their team. So my uncle, obviously, quite like my stepdad, is a LeBron fan. Not really a ba- like a specific basketball team fan. So he was assembling his all-time starting lineup of players LeBron played with. So obviously he went Kyrie, Dwayne Wade, uh, LeBron. That's the, such a front runner thing to do. <laughs> it, it is. It completely is. I have no disagreements with people whatsoever. I am glad I didn't. My all time LeBron team. This is that's why I hate the way All Star is now. <laughs> team LeBron. Fuck you. You're not a fucking team. You're a person. Um. Uh. So he had Kyrie, Dwayne Wade, LeBron, uh, and Bosh at the four, AD at the five. Now I said I, I asked him bad. I asked him if you had to cancel out A D and Bosch, because Bosch is technically a power forward who played center. Uh and A D is clearly a center who occasionally plays power forward. Um He prefers to play power forward. He prefers to play power forward. So I said if you had to cancel that out and you could only have one of them on the floor at a time, who would your five be? And now I said, as someone who actually watched those Mike Brown LeBron years. Um, I said LeBron's best center, uh, not counting his current centers now, uh, and Bosch when he played the five, was Zadrunas Elgowskis. And he was saying, no, Mm -hmm. I would put Birdman on there. I'm like, what? Birdman. And and he's like, yeah, Birdman does more things than Elgowskis. I said Elgowskis in his time playing with LeBron, Joel never, except for like LeBron's last two years and then one year Elgowskis played with him in Miami, Average yeah. less than 15 points a season. So I'm like, mm-hmm. that's valuable. And he's like, no, well, Anderson, Verjao, and Birdman offer more defensively. Well, they're energy um, guys. Yeah. Right. And I'm like, well, I would rather have an offensive guy with LeBron because LeBron is successful with shooters. Yeah. And to know that Elgowskis can shoot the three um, is invaluable. So I'm like, I would love – Ilgowskis and AD at the four and the five. Um, and they were – they slaughtered me. We argued for hours. Um, no, it's just too slow for the modern-day game for that to work the whole game. You would have to play – if you're going to do it, you want to play small ball, you put AD at the five and try to find another wing that he that LeBron played with to play him with him at four or at the three, four, which I, I would have to think about. I'm not – who did he play with? <laughs> like, uh, you can go Battier, you can go Rashard Lewis, you can go Daddy Kevin Love. Mike Miller. Mike Miller, uh, um, Kyle Korver if you wanted to, knowing you get no defense. Um, no. I can't think of anyone else, really. Yeah, this is insane, this whole yeah. fucking simulation. They right? won it in the, the first three years. They've kept – now they're just winning. <laughs> right? And I'm telling you, when, when you start to see it slow down – uh, is when you kind of go, in real life, they would never lose to those teams. Uh, they just <laughs> they, they never would. Um, but what's funny about the video is, see how much the team roster changes. That's what's Around the them. funniest. That's what's yeah. the funniest. Um, but, yeah, so I just want to get your opinion. I, I really liked Zadrinus Elgowskis. I, I thought he was great for LeBron. He was good for He was an all-star, too, I think. One he was, two twice. So. Twice. He was one an all star before LeBron, and then uh, he was an all star the year before him. LeBron got drafted, and then in L five. Mm-hmm. And then he had, and then he had that one year with Miami where he finally shaved his head, 
Yes. And if he got a little bit of a tan or a sunburn, whatever. The point is, it was a little different looking Z. But, yeah, Algosius was one of his better teammates for sure. Yeah. And I think um, he'd, even, he'd even say that too. That's what I'm saying. And I told my uncle, I'm like, LeBron, when he played in Miami, flew out to Cleveland to see his number get retired. You think LeBron's doing that for Vera Zhao and Birdman? Never. <laughs> They're not getting their, their jersey retired. <laughs> exactly. So I'm like, that should tell you everything you should know about Zadrunas Ogalskis. Like, he was really good. Um, he was good. He was. So, but all right, um, let's move on to football. Uh, obviously, football looks like it's opening up uh, for players to train also. Uh, I believe Giants and Jets are able to go to their respective uh, – I don't want to say camps, uh, uh, practice facilities. There you go. That's what you'd say. Practice facilities. Um, it looks like football's looking to start around the same time it usually always does, um, yeah. which to me, <clears throat> excuse me, training camp is way more important than preseason. Um, like if you can't get in a full training camp, I honestly don't want you to start on time. Um, right push it back a little bit because training camp is very important. They got eliminated. Who got it? Oh, yes. Yes. Yes, they did. You're going to see it a lot. There's one the year. Sixer. There's one year they get eliminated back to back by the Wizards and the Wizards won the championship. And oh they my. had like no roster. <laughs> well, they won two championships and got eliminated uh, that, that, that that next year. That's where I'm at right now. So Who eliminated just, them? They, I forgot. Sixers. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but no, so do, do you agree that, <clears throat> excuse me, that training camp is more important than the actual preseason? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Preseason is just, it's you're going through the motions more or less. Like just practice, it's like an extended practice. I don't mind preseason because it is against competition, but like even competition doesn't take it too seriously. It's so you play like against lesser players because you don't want these guys to get hurt and shit like that. Yeah. Uh, but I think, yeah, training camp is like where you get, your X's and O's, and that's where you get your wind. You know, these guys definitely need to, you know, practice. Uh, it's really important. Uh, preseason is more or less to get um, get that, that, that jolt of energy, like a, like pump to pump you up. Right. Get you, cause, because they don't play that much. It's really just to, just to play against people that are not your teammates, finally. <laughs> that's really – because you don't show your whole hand either, you know? I would say I compare NFL's preseason to NBA Summer League. It's just for your young guys. Um, yeah, really, like it is. Your actual starters play, like, maybe four or five snaps, and then it's like, all right, yeah, no, I did what I needed to do. Go ahead and uh, come in, guy, that will probably never see the light of day during the season. Exactly. Um, so it's ultimately for them to kind of showcase what they have um, so if you're a fan, you're like, oh, man, if my starting quarterback went down, I like this backup. It's pretty good. Um, you know, so to me, that's what's like the importance for preseason. But training camp is so important. That's where you see a lot of your, your injuries. That's where you see if guys were prepared heading into training camp. Um, right. That's when you hear like breaking news, blah, 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 tore an ACL. How? How? You weren't like playing an actual game. What were you doing? Yeah, that's the worst. Um, it's, it just it sucks because it's wow. like, what the hell did you do in practice? You weren't supposed to be practicing that hard. Like, what what yeah. the hell? Um, <clears throat> but yeah, no, I'm excited for it. Um, I I do have to say, Joel, I would have loved for you to have been a part of just that one topic, um, where Which we one? did all uh, where we did five best players from your franchise, oh. football wise. And my uncle is a Giants fan, so he did Giants. Oh, okay. Um, he actually shockingly had a money tumor all time rotation. Yeah. I thought that was weird. Cause to me, I would way rather have Victor Cruz than a money tumor. Money was there longer. He was, yeah, yeah. he was, but to me, actual ability, uh, I'd take Victor Cruz over Plaxico and, and tumor. Yeah. Well, for that, you can same thing about Odell. I mean, Odell was a fucking gift from God, off like as a talent. You know what I mean? Yes, but. he was. Um, and then I'll I'll tell you this because we're we're friends, and I don't want to hide the fact that I actually said it. I said Eli to me is a Hall of Famer, right? You can't. I mean, he had two of the greatest Super Bowl runs in the history of the NFL. Um, 
And I think he's a Hall of Famer. My asterisk was I do not believe his stats are enough to make him a first ballot Hall of Famer. But he hands down should be a Hall of Famer. Um, and my uncle didn't really disagree. Um, it's just – and he was, he was saying – because he said he always defends Eli. He said if you look at those – interception seasons where he like led the league in interceptions he said if you look at it a lot of those were Eli putting the ball in the receiver's hands and the receiver just missed the mark right yeah um and I said well usually <clears throat> that's where most quarterbacks interceptions come from uh is the receiver usually effing it up um but yeah no I mean you can't deny his talent he definitely wasn't a regular season guy he was definitely a you get me to the playoffs I'm going to get you where you need to go. Um, and I, I actually said this, and it's the last thing I'm going to say before we head into geek news. Eli Manning is a, is a uh, more clutch quarterback than Peyton Manning. And here's why I say it. His two runs to the Super Bowl were way more impressive than Peyton Manning's. Peyton Manning, the year he beat the Bears, do you know what team he faced to get to the Super Bowl? Mark Sanchez. <laughs> he played Mark Sanchez's Jets. And then he got to the Super Bowl and played oh, Rex Grossman. Well, they had, uh, what, one team they really had. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, um, I mean, who else is AFC? It's Ben Ro- Roethlisberger, isn't that the Steelers? Steelers are AFC? Yeah. Right. So, I mean, there there were some, but, like, the, I mean, I would, you, would, you can make the argument that he's had to go through harder teams for sure. Yeah, uh, like, <laughs> to get to where he got to but he did he got his two and you could put him there because I, I only saw Eli play I don't remember before Eli <laughs> like, <laughs> I, saw so I was like I don't know what a Phil Simmons and Kurt Warner is <laughs> yeah. I know what Kurt Warner was but not as a giant <laughs> like it was like after, you know and I don't remember him, like, I don't remember him doing quarterback and really giant that's how that's how I didn't watch at the time, you know. So, so uh, Eli Manning is the older quarterback I've known until recent, most recently. So I mean, it's different now with 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 Danny J- Daniel Jones. It's like it's a transition, but you know it's time. You know you could tell it was it was time. Eli needed to you know, let, him, let him go, retire, and I think that was a great decision. I mean, probably a little too late, but you know they made it. Yeah, and look, uh, it's very early on. But when NFL was showing its top games, Daniel Jones' game against the Buccaneers made it on there. Um, so everyone sees something there. It, it's there. Um, whether it pans out, who knows? Because remember, until 2007, no one was speaking highly of Eli Manning. <laughs> so uh, he had to prove it, and he did it. Um, so I have high hopes for Daniel Jones. That Buccaneers game showed me a lot. Yeah, that yeah. was a breakout game. That was the first game, too. Was crazy. Yes, it was. And it's like <laughs> he has the potential to be a star for the Giants. Yeah. Um, and look, Hopefully. Daniel Jones Hopefully. has the ability to do the most important thing in NFL history. Make Duke football relevant. <laughs> like, <laughs> what? Duke what? Football? Like, people – like, Fuck. if Daniel Jones wins a Super Bowl, everyone's going to go – what the hell is this Duke football thing you <laughs> like? What is this? Like, yeah, really. How can I get it? <laughs> what is so, a Duke uh, football? And and I will say, since Eli Manning has retired, uh, and so is Strahan, you, uh, Yura, Justin Tuck. I don't hate the Giants uh, anymore. Uh, that was just an <laughs> they're, not, they're not the team anymore. Right, exactly. So I don't hate the Giants anymore. So I I mean, look, you and you know this. You know I'm a huge Saquon Barkley fan, and you know I've only spoken well of Daniel Jones. Um, since he started playing. So, to me. Yeah, because before you were definitely talking shit. Oh, 100%. Joe, I never heard of this guy. <laughs> like, I don't watch college football, but, like, I at least, like, have my ear to the ground and know, like, oh, here's some sleepers. No one was talking about Daniel Jones. And when the Man. Giants selected him, I'm like, who's that? Who is this? Like, what is this? Who is this guy? It was a presenting yeah. moment again. I'm like, is this? Yeah. What is this? Hello. Um. So luckily for for you, Joel, you've got to see Kristaps uh prove to be better than what everyone expected him to be. Um, True. Daniel Jones looks. Even though he left me, Fuck yeah, it. he did leave you high and dry. 
Sure did. <laughs> okay. Um, but uh, but all right, let's move on to some geek news. We got some uh, breaking news, kinda, I guess. Uh, that was posted today. Um, would you say? No, I'm just trying to listen to random player, Damon Kerr. I mean, he's been our power oh. forward for three years. Wait, time out. Hold on. What's funny about Kerr, Joel, yeah. is that yeah. when Jordan and LeBron retire, he's yeah. fucking 93 overall. Wow. <laughs> Damon he Kerr? You, he helped you win a, he helped the Knicks win a series. I, I, I can't remember what series it was, but he had like 27 in a game, and I was like, what the fuck? Who is this? Who is this guy? Yeah. <laughs> like, who is this guy? Um, but uh, but no. Um, we got some kind of breaking news from um, uh, J uh, J Jonah Jamison himself. Uh, mm-hmm. That he J.K. Has, Simmons. J.K. Simmons, who, by the way, I don't know if you um saw it or not, but defending Jacob with Chris Evans. I haven't yet. I don't have Apple yet. I mean, I don't have yet. I don't have Apple. Uh... I don't have Apple. <laughs> give you my Apple, Joel. You, you guys, you and uh, you and April definitely have to watch that show. It is defending defending is, Jacob. Yes, it is breathtaking. I'll send you my my login info uh when we get off. Um, but J.K. Simmons is in it. That's why I brought it up. That's why I, oh, up. I didn't think I was going off off the rails. But um, J.K. Simmons uh has said um in a interview that he has signed uh for more appearances as J. Jonah Jameson, mm. but. It's not guaranteed in the way of it's a guarantee they'll use them for it. They're not guaranteed appearances. Right. It's just like, hey, if we want you, you're available. Come in. Right? You're right. <laughs> we already signed you. You don't got to sign anything. Just come in. Just just come in. Just come in. That's right. it. You got your money. Just come in. Um, right. So, I mean, this news doesn't really do anything for me only because I don't know how many more Spider-Man movies – will be um, shared between Spider-Man and the MCU uh, after these next two. Um, So I don't know where else MCU-wise he would show. So I don't know if this deal is with Sony or a shared one with Sony and MCU. So I'm not sure. Um, So I don't really know what to make of it. But, I mean, yeah, I would love to see more of them. I mean, who wouldn't? Your thoughts? My thoughts is that Michael Jordan completely eclipsed LeBron's career in this thing. <laughs> like, <laughs> he's, he's literally Scotty Pippen. <laughs> That's what he is. <laughs> That's ultimately um, what LeBron became for sure. Yeah, it's just insane. I'm um, like, what is going on? I don't even hear about LeBron. Oh, yeah, there he is. Like 99 next to fucking Jordan. Um <laughs> So, yeah, I love it. I love the idea of J.K. Uh, having a, a, a contract that he can appear in more movies as the man that we love him to be, J. Jonah Jameson. So, as a fan of Spider-Man, as a fan of J.K., as J. Jonah, awesome. Uh, it's good to hear. I, I can't wait to see him again. And we've already heard that he might actually be making an appearance in Morbius. And I have no doubt we'll see him again in Spider-Man 3, whatever they end up calling it. So, I'm excited. I am, I'm happy. Yeah, and what sucks is, Joel, we would have already had castings and an idea about what the story of the next Spider-Man would be. We'd have so much more information, Joel, if it wasn't for this fucking pandemic. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) On everything. On everything. This episode probably wouldn't even be able to cover sports because it would just all be about all this geek news that we had. Trailers, uh, casting, directors, all kinds of stuff we'd have right now. Yeah. So. It's insane right now. We're in what? We're almost in June. So yeah, yeah. This, is, this is like hype season. Yeah, oh, this is our season, man. Yeah. <laughs> like this is our time to shine, yeah. and nothing. Um, so I mean, that just really sucks. Mavericks. I'm sorry. No, you're good. No, uh, Mavericks just took out the Knicks in the in the finals four three. Fucking met monsters that last game, but yeah, they they, they were on a three game winning streak. I mean, championship run, and then. Mavericks kind of fucked them over. You're gonna they, see that. at this point they have five championships. This is insane. You're gonna see that a lot. They go for a few and then they get knocked out, and then they go for a few and then they get knocked out. But I will say, uh, but they have it five. Will, <laughs> it'll warm your heart because you're not like a huge LeBron fan. Uh, he retires before Jordan. No shit. <laughs> um, no so when shit. you see it, you're gonna be like, I knew he was a bitch. He was Pippin, so he's like, whatever. He was. He was like, I can't really do this anymore. Um, but all right, we got some more news. Uh, that other news being, let me pull it up here. 
we got some news of possibly getting um Kanan in uh in live action, which was Kanan. Yeah. I was like, that's really oh sorry, not Kanan. Ezra. Ezra, sorry. Ezra Bridges. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute, sorry. what capacity? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I was looking at Kanan's name while I was scrolling and I was like, oh Kanan. I'm like, no, not him. Uh, Ezra Bridger, sorry. Uh, there's been a casting search for a live action uh, Ezra show. Um, well, it, Ezra in, character in some show. Right. Uh, we don't know what show. Disney and Lucasfilm um, are looking for a person of color uh, around 30, 40, uh, preferably of Asian descent. Now, let me say this when it comes to casting. If you are ever looking for representation, in a movie, in a casting detail ever says preferably, just know you're not getting that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you're never getting it. Um, you're going to get something just, close? Right. Maybe. You'll get something that looks Asian, but it's yeah. not really Asian. Yeah. Um, well, it's, it's Asian preferably, but they're open to, like, with Latino and whatever other, uh, whatever it's just, what, what they're pretty much going for is someone that looks like Kanan. I mean, Ezra, no, sorry, Ezra. Ezra. Um, that looks like Ezra, and to me, I I I despise that. And an <laughs> like, older Ezra, you know. Like to me, I didn't even know Ezra was Asian. So he's he, he's not necessarily Asian. He's not white. <laughs> That's right. <what> he is. <laughs> right. So when they said preferably Asian, I'm like, I never looked at Ezra and thought, oh, Asian. I was just like, right, whatever. <laughs> like, right. So not sure what really he is. Have like a specific race. Um, right. You know, outside of like the obvious. Mace Windu's black. <laughs> and it's like, everybody else is, that's human, is white. You know, a little racist, but whatever. Um, but yeah, so I mean, are, are you excited about seeing uh, Ezra? Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited. Because uh, I, I always imagined him, like, what would he, who would play him? Like, like who would be a good young like Ezra? Um, but now that, you know, I don't even know what old Ezra would look like. I guess like an older version of the young one. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm not. Yeah, different options. I'm not really a fan of them of them making him so old, mainly because if he's that old, even though we know Jedi are kind of like Super Saiyans, the older they get, the stronger they get. Yeah. Um, but it kind of means good. that Kanan is is gonna be like pretty old. <laughs> like, well, Kanan's dead. He's dead. When did he not die? Rebels. He died in Rebels. Yeah, he died in Rebels. Did I not finish Rebels? Did you not finish Rebels? Surprise. Holy shit, I don't think I finished Rebels. When the fuck did he die in Rebels? Who killed him? <laughs> that was the biggest thing. He was like, it's, it's some explosion. I forgot what it was. He was holding it back, whatever. Sacrificed himself to save them. Oh, and like, we actually see that he died, or was it one of yeah. those he disappeared? He died. Oh, shit. Wow. <laughs> oh, my God. God. He's not at the end. He's not there at the end. Holy shit. Cuz Ezra gets Ezra's the one that we don't know what happened to. He that kind of disappears. And you think he might be dead, but you don't know for sure, and that's where it ends with like Sabine and um Ahsoka going out to search for Ezra like a couple years later, not even right away. Wow. Um you might want to go back. Apologize. I I guess I <laughs> it, it's I'm going to be honest with you. I watched Rebels when it was, like, legit on, and then, like, I never went back to it. So, it, it's been off. I, I would like to go here. back. It's been a while. Uh, it's a good show. No, I, I didn't have any problem with the show. It was just that the the ending of Darth Maul, I wasn't that, that much of a fan of. Um, and mm -hmm. I, I think at that time, I was just missing Clone Wars. Um, I mean, I, I, I still wanted Clone Wars to come. Like even when they said nope, it's rebels now, and it's like, eh. but I, rebels I, I, good. Rebels really good. Um, also a huge thing I hated about rebels, Joel. I did not like how thin those lightsabers were. <laughs> yeah, well, the art is a little different. It's it was so different. weird to look at. Um, but no, I mean, I am excited to see Ezra. Um, I mean, I kind of feel like now that you told me that, we know where Ezra's gonna show up. Um, huh? The coach's name is Lucas Lucas. And he, Joel, he was coach of the year for like almost six years in a row. It was crazy. Yeah. I don't know how these simulations work, but they were in our favor. I'll tell you oh, that. The, the Wizards finally they, they eliminated us. 
Now, wait till he shows you the roster that was. Look at this guy, Lefteris Demontopoulos. Wow. And they beat Michael Jordan and LeBron, Joel. <laughs> Lefteris Demontopoulos is a beast. Yeah, apparently. Um, AD retired. Fuck. And what was I going to say? Oh, oh, so now that you told me how Rebels ended, um, I think. Sorry. Oh, now. No, 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 you're fine. I probably saw it and just forgot it. Um, I now can assume where Ezra's going to pop up. And I assume that would be in Ahsoka and Sabine show. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, well. It could take place with them still trying to find him. And then they end up finding him very Luke S style uh, to where he's kind of shut himself off from everything. Um, and then it's all about getting him back up. Now, the well, tough part will be, who's your villain in a series like that? Because it's like, there were no Sith Lords um, for a long time <laughs> between... Yeah. Uh, Rebels in Force Awakens. So it's like, I don't know where you're going to go with this. Well, there was um, there's Inquisitors. There's, uh, there's Force-sensitive people. There was the, the the Knights of Ren. I mean, there are people like that, you know, uh, that they probably have, have run-ins with um, between that, in that time period. Because at this point, you're looking at what the one. Um... It really depends, because I heard they're doing a Rebel sequel series, which was going to focus on Ahsoka and Sabine. So I don't know if a live-action version is going to be the same thing, because we have heard that they're going to do an Ahsoka live-action show. We've heard that we might see Sabine in a live-action show as well. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I have no idea what the plan is going forward, except that we're apparently a lot of these parent force sensitive characters are still alive. So yeah. Ahsoka, Ezra... I mean, um, I shit. would like to see two parts of Ahsoka's life uh, in a live action series, either right after the events of Clone Wars. Um, like, what did she do? Uh, what did she do right after that? Um, and, uh, or um, you could do right before she appears in Rebels. Um, you could kind of show what has she, she been doing? Where has she been? Um, either one of those two timelines I'd be completely fine with um, and actually be in favor of. Um, but I did always wonder, Joel, like, if you're Obi-Wan, did you never sense that Ahsoka was still alive and, like, make a phone call? Uh, I don't know. Uh, that That's actually one of the rumors that she might show up in Obi-Wan. Ooh. I like that. I would like that a lot because we have to remember – in Lucas's world, there is no Ahsoka. It's only, right. <laughs> it's only in um in this in the current, movie world, right? Yeah, in his yeah. movie world, there was no Ahsoka. Um, it's only technically in- Lucas was in charge of Clone Wars. <laughs> no, he was, but we know that wasn't his character. Um, no, he didn't create that. He character. created that character. Um, Dave Filoni created Ahsoka. Um, so it changes right. a lot. It changes a lot. Like um, that was one of the things I was disappointed about that we didn't get to see a moment between Ahsoka and Anakin uh, before the end of Clone Wars, like the, uh, within that last two episodes. Yeah. Um, because it changes the canon now. Because in canon, it was Anakin felt like he didn't have no one left. Like Padme was betraying him. Obi-Wan was trying to sleep with Padme. Um, in so his I'm head. Like, in his head. It was so weird. It was like, where's this yeah. coming from, Anakin? Um, jealous, jealous. He's a jealous best. So I would have loved to have seen Ahsoka try to help Anakin come back to the light side before he ultimately just embraced the dark side. Um, Wizards. <laughs> Wizards were so good. I don't know where the hell it came from, man. I don't know where it came from. Um, mm-hmm. But all right, let's move on. We got some news Joel was very, very, very excited about. And that yeah, is... just me. No. <laughs> No, 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 no. It definitely wasn't. I'm just messing with you. Um, but you were definitely excited to hear the news that Ryan Gosling mm-hmm. has been casted yeah. for the Wolfman. Yeah. Uh, now, apparently, Gosling will be playing an anchor man who gets infected in what has been described as having... Go ahead. Having a um, okay. uh, network... What is it? That is weird. Okay. Go ahead, I'm sorry. No, you're good. The description is really weird. Um, Gosling would play an anchor man who gets infected in what has been described as having a network slash nightcrawler vibe. I don't know what that means. 
on the movie. Like, uh, I don't know what network is, but I know what Nightcrawler is. <laughs> uh, so I get it. It's kind of that intense, creepy news anchor. Well, I don't know about the news anchor part, but you remember Night Nightcrawler with um, Jake Gyllenhaal? Yeah. Remember? Yeah. That, that's what that movie going to have that kind of feel to it. But with the Wolfman, I don't know how that works. I'm not sure what network is. It's going to be definitely focused on getting the news uh, in certain and, like, not so the best way. You know, because that's what Nightcrawler was about, him getting to the – sometimes creating the problem just so he can be there first, you know. to You know, it's really weird how that movie was. Uh, And Jake Zinnohold did great in that movie, by the way. Um, Very good. Should have won. Should have won for that. I'm so excited for the fuck with Wolfman because we love the the Invisible uh, Invisible Man. Yep. Um, And I'm like, this could be the beginning of something great for – Universal and their monster movie, their monster characters. You know, same Invisible Man. Uh, we've got word that they're doing a Dracula movie now. That Wolfman got pretty much secured now. So, so much can be done with these characters. Um, and they kind of shit the bed a couple of years ago with their dark universe, or they kind of tried a little too hard. <laughs> and they kind of made it less horror and more almost, they kind of made it, I don't know what they were trying to do, honestly. Uh, they just didn't. They didn't do it successfully, unfortunately. And it's weird because their mummy movie had potential, because they did a cast a good mummy, but they kind of. I don't know what the fuck that movie was about. You know, they, they wasted a good mummy. So, yeah. I am excited. I am excited for this this Wolfman and and what they have going forward with Blum Blumhouse. Sorry. I was just about. I'm glad you said that. This is why. Um, I'm so glad uh, we, we play off of each other so well because um, I was just about to say uh, what I know excited me and you uh, was the fact that it's Jason Blum. <laughs> it's, it's it's Jason Blum. Blum. Um, and, Joel, I was actually saying this with um, uh, Dom and Tia when we did our, um, our Geek Vibes Live episode. I was saying how I believe Blumhouse and A24 should have their own streaming service. That's how, um, that's how big time they are as a uh, as a movie company right now. A twenty four is killing it, and Blumhouse has its name on so much that's just killing it in the box office. Um, right. But what I'm really excited about is Blumhouse is going to do something eerily similar to what Benice, uh, Benicio del Toro's Wolfman did, which was make it uber dark, make it scary. Make it something that people are like, God damn, I can't take my kids to see this. <laughs> like, that's what I want this monster universe to be, something that is terrifying. Um, and one Not thing me and you were, were shocked <laughs> by was in building a monster universe, the Invisible Man ended, spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't seen it, but it's been out for forever now. Um, we were yeah. shocked it didn't take the route the original did. She's not actually invisible. <laughs> he wasn't actually invisible. Right. Um, it was a suit. So it's yeah. like when we see them all team up, to see that she hasn't put a suit on will be like, this is weird. <laughs> if they team up. I don't know. You're right. Yeah, I'm not sure how if this, these movies are going to actually connect or anything. But I'd always leave the door open. You never know. Would you be disappointed if they didn't? Maybe a little, because I like everything connecting. <laughs> that's just that's how I am. I like seeing a universe, a universe form, but not necessarily. It's like I'm not sure what you and how would you, what would you do? Like, it's not like the four. Like back when they originally had them all in the same. They were the first movies to, to to you know connect back in the day. You had the Wolfman, Dracula, Frankenstein, all in one movie, and, it, and it was the, the creature from the Black Lagoon. Um, as long as it can be written and done well, I'm all for it because I love monsters and I, why not? Like if that's money right there, they, you're leaving it on the table if you don't. But let's see how these solo movies do, and uh, if they want to surprise us with a with a crossover movie, cool. <laughs> I will say, her not being actually invisible is something that can always be retconned. Um, like it, it that's not a permanent thing it's not like oh she wasn't invisible now so she'll never be invisible that's easily retconned um Juwan is, what juan's doing without knowing is he's kind of spoiling the movie <laughs> the invisible man <laughs> if you watch the end of the movie is no longer alive so she takes oh. the suit <laughs> um, yeah. oh yeah. well so <laughs> look i'm saying it assuming that people have actually seen this <laughs> this yeah. movie by now 
Um, and if you haven't, I'm sorry, but it's like <laughs> you kind of should have seen this movie already. Yeah. Um, it's kind of weird if you didn't, um, especially if you have interest in it. Like it's it's out. It was out around when the movie actually came out in theaters. Right. Uh, watch at home. So if I did spoil it for you, I I want to say sorry. sorry, but it's yeah. you should have seen it. Uh, <laughs> Look at this. I guess LeBron retired. Uh huh. And it's just Michael Jordan by himself on the Knicks in 2039, and they're in the finals. Yeah, you're almost done. It's almost over. This is crazy. Not All right. Um, we also got some news of, let's see here. Oh, all right. I need you to break this down for me, Joel, because I tried to break it down for someone and they told me how confused they were. Um, this oh, Henry Cavill please. news that, that wasn't uh, about his cameos. Um, evidently, the bottom line of it is um, he is negotiating to reprise his role as Superman but it Period. is not confirmed. Don't even talk about the rest that. of it. Yeah. You just end it right there. He is in negotiations to become Superman once again for future movies. That's where it ends. I don't care what anybody says about cameos or a solo movie. That's all. They don't know what yet. They're still trying to figure out. That's the whole point. That's why it's confusing because they haven't figured out where they're putting him yet. But they just know they want him to do it. That's all you got to know. He's coming back in some capacity. They're negotiating so he can come back and, and, and do that. Um, cause as we know, like last year they reported that he was out. Remember? Yeah. THR, no longer Superman. He says otherwise looks like the same day and his agent, you know, they, they kind of debunked it themselves. So obviously whatever negotiations they were having then fell through. Jump forward where this motherfucker's had in a fucking interview with, with fucking Zack Snyder during the Justice League, Zack Snyder cut reveal party and things start to change. So now it looks, seems like things are on the right side of things and looks like there are new people in charge of Warner Brothers or it seems like they've been in charge of Warner Brothers and things are going forward. So it seems like there's a positive note now to the fact that the trades got word that they're in positive negotiations on him reprising his role as Superman in future movies. That's all you need to know. It doesn't matter if it's on cameos or solo. That has not been confirmed yet because we don't know. And even though we've heard otherwise in terms of rumors, in terms of a movie, as far as what the trades know, he's in some type of talk to be Superman again. That is it, period. Yeah. No, look, I am completely with you. Um, I, I don't like to dig too deep into this only because – Don't overthink it. Um, they have shown that uh, in disagreements, both sides are not afraid to walk away. Um, so anytime you hear that, you should get nervous till you hear he has officially signed on. Um, so that's what my mindset is. And that's why I told Kanan, it's not a guaranteed um, that he comes back because his issues then could still be issues now. Um, he wants creative 100%. control. But so to me, the news um, wouldn't be this. They, the trades wouldn't report it if they weren't. Because you got to remember, when we get word of shit, shit's already been done. Right. They're not in talks. Their talks have been over. You know, he's probably signed the dotted line, right? But they're not saying that. Well, whoever's getting word of anything is the fact that, oh, this is like probably months old. <laughs> They've right. been talking for months. We're just right. getting news. Of, we're getting wind of it now. So for me, it's like them saying he's in talks. He probably is already signed on. But, yes, you can never be 100% sure till he confirms it himself or his agency confirms it himself. Or if the fucking rock wants to do it one day while he's working out and he jumps into the gym and they're in the gym again. Whatever. The point is, until something like that happens, we won't know 100% for sure, but this is a positive sign that he actually is coming back as Superman. Whereas opposed to last year, everything pointed the opposite. Right, and essentially what he wants is what Ben got while he was Batman, which is uh, creative control. Ben did have an EP credit for Justice League, um, and that wasn't just because it's like, hey, do you want an EP credit? He was like, hey, I heard what happened with BVS. I don't want that shit to happen with this. Ultimately, it did. Uh, and we know why it did. Um, but Ben's name was still an EP for Justice League. Um, and Henry... Ben, to Ben's credit, Ben was uh, an established director and actor. No, 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 no. no. I, 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 completely, I completely understand that. I'm saying Henry wants to be, even if it's not an EP credit, what Henry wants is he wants to be able to walk in, no matter who What's your director and writer is, and he wants to say, 
this is the story I want, and everyone just nods their head yes. And every character, and he deserves it, because he's been through three movies already. He's been with this character for many years now. He deserves to have say in his character going forward. Just like everybody I, else. You can't, I can't tell, you can't tell me Momoa doesn't have some type of say in what an Aquaman going forward. Or the same thing with Gal Gadot and Wonder Woman. They all deserve say, some type of say in their own characters. I would say Henry deserves it uh, more than anyone else because I would have never thought, and I think you'll agree with me, I would have never thought a world with Superman has so little Superman in it. BVS what? was a Batman movie. Justice League well, uh, ultimately was a Batman-led movie. Um, so it's like you, you got sprinkles of Superman. Um, like no one ever no one ever says, yo, Joel, you know what my favorite part of BVS was? When Superman, like no one ever leads the conversation with that. It's always Batman. Uh, and then in Justice League, it's kind of just like whatever. Um, so I'm like, Henry just deserves better. Um, I kind of feel like, remember how you always said to me, Cyclops is always the leader of X-Men? Like, always. At, and then the, Wolverine, at the very least, the co-leader, yes. Right, and then Wolverine comes in and everyone's just kind of like, nah, I don't really care about Cyclops. Anymore. Wolverine's not the leader. Even no, 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 no. I get you. No, no, I get you. I'm saying <laughs> that's ultimately what's been happening to Henry Cavill's Superman. Right. It's like, no, this guy should be your leader, but then here comes this Batman guy. Yeah. Who's going to pay attention to him? Um, yeah. So... Which so is Henry fine. definitely deserves better. Right. It depends how he's written. Just don't write him off and don't treat him like he's some side character. Right. It's, especially Superman, the granddaddy of all superheroes. Like, you can't sidestep that character. And that's right. why the whole Go rumors ahead. coming out that it was just he's signing on to do cameos didn't make sense. It didn't make sense because, like, why would, he, why would he agree to that? <laughs> like, well, I'll say this. It makes no sense. I'll say this, it made a little sense because the way I viewed it as was, it was a win-win. It was Warner Brothers or AT&T, whoever you want to say. It was someone saying, hey, some of these movies may need your help. Like, they may need the star power of you. Be the face of them, and you'll get your, you'll get your sequel. You'll get your sequel. That's what you want. What we want is Shazam 2 might need your face because the first one globally didn't do so well. <sighs> Um, so it might need you to kind of put it over or black Adam might need you to kind of put it over. Um, oh, so that's I, what, that's what I thought. I thought it was just a win-win between both sides. It wasn't my, my, only do cameos. My thing was that the, the cameos were part of it, but I don't, I don't think that was the main reason for signing. Right. Like, I'm not just coming back to just show up here and there. Cause like I told Kanan yesterday, I'm like, I never believed you were going to show up in the new black Adam flash wonder woman. Or Aquaman. I mean, th why would you force it? First of all, why would you force him into, like, The Flash or Aquaman or Wonder Woman? Any of those movies. No need. Black Adam is too late at this point. They have a whole script written now. Unless, unless it's a small cameo at the very end of the movie, he's not going to get in there. So Shazam 2, there's a possibility. Because, you know, they're probably in, they probably have a script ready, but that can be rewritten. They haven't started filming yet. He's still two years away. You have chance to get fit him into Shazam 2. He was in, basically, the end of Shazam, the first movie. It kind of makes sense, right? There's right. the first possible cameo would be Shazam 2. Of anything, I would, I would bet more on that cameo and then it possibly, possibly being a sequel to maybe a Black Adam movie or his own movie, which is, I think was, is, the, is the cream of the crop there, and whatever possible Justice League movie we do in the future. It depends on how many appearances are on his contract. And it's just, as far as we knew, he only had the one, and that's still open. So that, to me, they just extended his, his stay <laughs> for appearances, you know what I mean? Yeah. And apparently, yes, like we were talking about earlier, it's just for him to have a little bit more control over his own character going forward, you know? Right. right. It's, it's, it's his ability to be able to come in and say, you're not making a Supergirl movie. <laughs> um. <laughs> God, those fuckers should not be in charge. And they are, and thank God. <laughs> um, no but offense no, to we, Supergirl, but let's be real. No, look, and listen, listeners, me and Joe, I want to make this very clear. We 100% want to see Supergirl down the line in a, um, in a movie with, with Superman. We just don't want to see Supergirl instead of Superman. That's right. what me and Joel are saying. But we would, right. we would love to see Supergirl interact with uh, Henry Cavill's mm -hmm. Superman. I don't mind seeing more side characters, but you got to establish what you got first. Right. You know? And Fuck Man of you. Steel, like we have to remember, Man of, like the sequel to Man of Steel isn't BVS, albeit that's what they wanted. It's not. Some people like some people like to say that, but that's, that's it's not. 
It's not the case at all. So he it's has a sequel in story, sequel. but in, in terms of not for himself, you know what I mean? As a solo, you can't count that because there's so many major characters in it. Like I, I agree, you can't, I wouldn't count it as a, a direct sequel. It's more so a origin to the Justice League than it is a sequel to Superman. Um, yeah. Because it was a three-part arc. Remember, it was supposed to be BVS, Suicide Squad, Justice League. Um, so it was like a three-part arc. So to me, it was the origin of Justice League, not really a story about Superman. Um, so that's how we view it. Um, let, let's get to the second part of the Superman news. Um, uh, according to um, – I just forgot his name – uh, John Campia, uh, oh, yeah. he is hearing rumblings that J.J. Abrams could be directing uh, Man of Steel 2. Um, now, I want to make this very clear. Me and Joel have been talking about this for years, um, about how cool it would be if J.J. Abrams directed Superman. I'm not going to sit here and say me and Joel heard anything or we were being told. We were just saying J.J. Abrams... We're- seems like the kind of guy that could do really good with the Superman project. We also said he'd be really good with Green Lantern. Um, So we were a little bit all over the place with J.J. Abrams, but this news uh, popped to us differently because it's always been something we were looking forward to. Now, I will say this. I do believe if this news is true, it is a win-win. Again, it's a win-win scenario again. I do believe they asked J.J. Abrams to help out with their streaming service. He then agreed and decided to pick uh, the group of characters he had the most interest in outside of Superman, which ultimately were JLD, uh, Justice League Dark. Um, So I don't believe the studio asked him to do Justice League Dark. That was him. But I do believe they said, hey, you want to do Superman? We kind of need your name on something else (laughs) to kind of get the ball rolling. Um, and ultimately they agreed on that. And then I think it was a handshake deal for him to do Superman, but obviously you need Henry Cavill there first before you can announce that they have a director. Um, Mm -hmm. I do believe once Henry Cavill's news is, uh, official, you will then hear, um, the director, uh, regardless of if it's JJ or not, you will hear a director legit right after the Henry Cavill news is, uh, legitimized but um what are your thoughts on this report by john campia uh i think it just make based on the, well, the information we were given recently it connects well you know like we've heard that he's back in, in positive negotiations and if you're hearing that from the trades it's possible because it, 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 it's possible that they're probably even further than that uh and like you said there may have been already a handshake deal between them and jj to do a Superman movie, and that's just been on the back burner. He already admitted to having talks about it. He admitted it, <laughs> like, that they've discussed it. You know, it's been a possibility. Then he eventually signed to Warner Brothers. We know his company is going to be involved with the Justice League Dark series on, on HBO Max. Um, it's, this is all just going to take time to come out, but once, they have, like you said, Lance, once they're ready to, to, to officially announce Andrew Cavill's back, we finally might get word that, hey, J.J. is ready to do, to do a, a, a DC movie, and that's Superman. And then it'll be with Henry, who was on his short list when J.J. was attached to do Superman in the past with, for uh, Superman Flyby. So he was gonna, one of the top running guys that he wanted anyway, so he might end up getting you know the guy he wanted back in the day in the future. And uh, they probably might just work out that way that J.J. can direct a Superman movie and he'll get the guy who's still attached to be Superman and everybody wants to be Superman in the Man of Steel sequel or whatever they want to fucking call it. Um, and, you know, it's just what we wanted. We've been wanting this, and this is just more positive news towards that. Now, it's a rumor. Yes. He had two guys. Apparently, he confirmed it with two people. It was for the one person was someone that told him uh, about the Ben Affleck news years ago. Two years ago, exactly, when we were all in denial. Trust me, I was in major denial. <laughs> um, and then there was the other one where he got, I forgot what the other news was, but he was, those sources ended up being right both times. Point is. And one of the sources were saying, there is, um, there is a Superman movie coming. Henry Cavill is attached to it, but they're not sure. Um, well, they're not sure if, Henry, if it's Henry, but they, they're sure J.J. is directing it. That's what they're saying. And then the other source was saying, um, he's going to either be a director or at least a producer on the next movie. 
and definitely Henry is in it. So it's what it's like. The, so they have two different sources in similar fashion. They're not exactly the same, but they're both pointing towards Henry, JJ, and Superman. That's a, in one movie, in some capacity. <laughs> uh, well, look, we're we're fans of it. Uh, however, it plays out. We've just been since what 2008. Uh, been just waiting for a sequel to Man of Steel. Yeah, uh, so ridiculous. I really don't think me nor Joel care who directs <laughs> it. Uh, we just want it. We want it, and we want it to be good. Um, but I, I always feel actors of some notoriety should be like basketball players of some notoriety. Like if LeBron comes in and tells you, hey, man, uh, I'll come play for the Lakers, but I want blah, blah, blah to be my head coach. Go do it. Like go do There is no downside of it. There just isn't. The downside is you picked a head coach and he doesn't like him, and now you got to come out and fire that head coach and then get the guy that LeBron did want. So to me, I view this as if Henry Cavill wants JJ, just make it happen. There just shouldn't be any arguments. There shouldn't be any, well, we might want to go a different. No, just why? Like, I've never understood why studios are so annoying with that. If you have a star, like, I'm not saying like someone that's up and coming. If you have a legit star and they say, hey, I want A, B, C, or D as my director in my story, just do it. Like, just do it. Like, they're coming from a standpoint of the fans. And that's where your money comes from. Uh, Like, I think we're under this weird notion that everything has to be Hollywood. um, So it spreads out to people that aren't necessarily fans. And that's not true. That's just not true at all. (laughs) Like, it's just not. So to me, it's like, make the best superhero movie you can. And it will speak volumes to people that aren't superhero fans. um, Because they'll want to be part of the hype. Trust me. I had people that went to see Endgame that never even saw the first Avengers. They just want to be part of the hype. Um, And that's the world we live in. That's the world we live in. So to me, if this is what Henry wants, make it happen. Um, I honestly don't want JJ as a producer only because if he's a producer, I need JJ and Henry to agree on the director. Because as a producer, you are ultimately setting up what you want the movie to be. And the director's coming in and executing that. That's what we saw with Wonder Woman. Zack Snyder 100% set the landscape for that movie, and Patty just came in and directed it. That's why it looks so much like a Zack Snyder movie. That's why Wonder Woman 84. <laughs> right. Yeah, especially the end of it. That's why Wonder Woman 84 looks like Patty Jenkins. Like, that's just her. Uh, there is no Zack effect. There's nothing. It's just her. That's why it's so bright and beautiful. Um, but yeah, I, I, I just think as a producer, they would have to collaborate a hundred percent, but, um, no, this news is something me and you, uh, are definitely excited about and we hope it pans out. Um, all right. I think we got a few more topics, right? Not really. I think those are the bulk of it. That was the bulk of it. Unless you want to talk about something else. Uh, let me just look through. I don't really think there's much else. Um, let me see. Oh. Tom Ellis closes deal to return uh, Paving the Way for Season 6 Renewal by Netflix. Um, I feel like we spoke this story into existence. We legit said last week, like, come on, Tom, like, just make this shit happen. And, like, a week yeah. later, he made it happen. So, yeah, literally, you, Tom. our last show, we talked about <laughs> it. Like, ah, oh, Lucifer is on old. And then it's <laughs> now we're good. <laughs> so, we obviously have the power uh, <laughs> to make these things happen, Joel. Um, uh, what did I want to say? I was going to say, um, have you, uh, have you started, um, watching stuff on HBO Max? No, I have not. No, I'm not. I want to, but I have not started yet. Um, mainly because I've been playing Red Dead Redemption, so. Gotcha. Not I am. You've been taking up some of my time. Uh, really fun game so far, so. Yeah, I mean, I will. I mean, I definitely want to see, uh, Beware the Batman. So that was there. I can't wait yes. to see that. Oh, I was so excited, Joel. No, I'm no idea. I never finished it, and I thought I did. I was wrong. Oh, <laughs> my like, God. Wait, did you at least see who the, the villain to end the season was? No, and I thought I did, because I was I, – I thought, like, it ended around where Croc showed up. But no. It was, like, it was no, wrong. there was more. <laughs> I, all right, I won't spoil it for you. you you'll love it when you see it. Yeah, um, I, I look forward to watching that, yeah. But I will say it has an extensive library – I still feel this way, and Kanan disagreed with me. Um, oh. DC Universe just shouldn't exist. 
Um, it should be absorbed. It should be absorbed. And it should, it should be how when you go to Disney Plus and you click on Marvel, everything MCU-wise is there. Exactly. Um, that's how it should be here. It, it I should, agree. It's stupid, Joel. It's stupid to know that at some point, HBO Max and DC Universe will both have to be paid for. <laughs> like, it doesn't make sense at all. It does like, not. It does especially not. with the price that HBO Max is. I'm like, why would you want to pay an extra seven dollars like it just, it, for DC Universe that doesn't even have like the main movies? It just has old movies. Right. And it has. I mean, don't get me wrong. It has a lot of the cool older shows. Uh, and the, the thing, the thing about DC Universe that makes it special is the comic books. The library it has is insane. So. If it can come with the library and when it gets away, if it gets uh, eventually absorbed, uh, I think it'll be HBO Max will be definitely worth the fucking price then. And <laughs> I'll say like, this. Ooh. And I'll say this, Joel. What sucks is because you probably haven't looked through HBO Max yet for DC. Does not have uh, Batman the animated series. No, it does, does not, not have Justice League Unlimited. Because it it's all on it's all on DC, DC universe. universe, right? So to me, um, it just I. I hate that. It's it's so stupid. I shouldn't have to go in between. Because uh, to me, remember I told you it made no sense Beware of the Batman wasn't on DC Universe. Yeah, now we know why. <laughs> now we know why. And it's like, this is, I'm like, this this is so bullshit. Dumb. Yeah, this is yeah. dumb. Like, honestly, right now, and it's crazy, right now I have HBO Go, HBO Max, and DC Universe. That should not be the case. They're all I the same it. thing. <laughs> I was going to, I deleted all my, I just have HBO Max, but um, I don't see the point of the other ones. They're all the same shit. <laughs> Not at all. Uh, Not at all. Max is where it's at. If you're going to pay $15 a month, you're going to pay for the thing that gives you the most stuff. So it's HBO Max. Yeah, for sure. 100%. Yeah. But um, like all the Harry Potter movies, like I'm going to marathon through that because I've seen them all, but many years ago and I barely remember any of them. So I'm going to marathon right through you. that. I actually, that was my plan tonight to actually start that tonight was to start the Harry Potter um it's funny you say that um i will say this hbo max i need you to kind of get your shit together and get 4k i have a 4k tv and i kind of feel like a peasant not watching my movies and shows on hbo max not being 4k um clean that shit HBO up max has, i mean this universe has 4k you better get with the program. I'm like, what? Like this? This is what does not make sense. Um, and I'll tell you this. You know what else was frustrating, Joel? I had to go between Netflix and DC. Uh, I mean, in uh, in HBO Max to get my uh, Crisis Marathon on. That is so infuriating. <laughs> no, it is so annoying. We're gonna watch Crisis. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> So stupid. Um, but I will say, uh, once the rights to CW shows uh, is up for Netflix, and ultimately it goes to HBO Max, what they should do is start separating these uh, crossovers um, to where you can just watch. Separated. Right, you can only watch the crossovers. Like it just, it's it's so annoying it's, to scroll through each show to find the crossovers that you want. You gotta um, look through the list. Like, all right, this is yeah. right. Yeah, like come on, like just separate it so it's so much easier. Um, because you could honestly do a marathon of just crossovers with the CW shows. Yeah, you um, could. That'd be fun one day. We'll just do right? the crossover. I would love to do that. I would love to weekly break down the crossovers for the CW. Yeah, and then rank them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, like, that would this. be a little unfair because nothing will beat Crisis. <laughs> so, yeah, Crisis is tough. For number two. We'd be voting yeah. for number two. Um, but I think that's that's pretty much it. Uh, Simon Kimberg says he'd love the opportunity to direct an X Men. I bet um, he would. Movie We're good for the though. MCU. Um, his direct quote is: "I've dedicated a lot of my life to Logan and Deadpool and the X Men, and would love to do a fresh take." I will say this, Simon Kimberg, you've had your time. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, please move on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that would be like if <laughs> – that'd be like if in 10 years they rebooted the, the DCEU and Zach's like, Zach Snyder. Zach's like a fresh take at it. That's yeah. no way. <laughs> like, you've had your chance. You've done what you've done. We need new faces here. They gave you your movie and everything. Let's go. We've given you everything. Like, leave us alone. Um, oh, Joel, we got two, new, two big uh, news items we completely were about to skip over. Uh, very, very early talks have begun at Warner Brothers regarding the next film to feature Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn. Uh, we ultimately assume that they'll either smarten up and do um, Gotham City Sirens 
Uh, or we maybe could get the toxic movie we were hoping we, we got a few years ago in Joker and Harley. Um, you wouldn't want that? I just want Jared Leto's Joker back. I'm, I'm, cool, I'm that's fine. I just don't want to see just the Joker Harley movie. Yet. I would rather see her. Either Gotham City Sirens or a sequel to Bird the Prey. One of the two. See, that's what's... Okay, I, I've always been wanting to talk to you about this, and this is the perfect time. I kind of feel like the way Birds of Prey ended was to show you, like, hey, we did this so you guys would pay attention to who Birds of Prey are, and right. now that you know them, there is no need for Harley Quinn again. Um, it's that's just fine. Prey now. So did you feel that way, or did you always think, like, oh, no, no, she'll definitely be back? I No. I mean, I guess they could do it themselves, but I don't know if they did a, gr- a, gr- a good enough job separating them, if you know what I mean. So I think if you see Birds of Prey again, it should probably be versus the Gotham City Siren. Because it would just be, you need more, no- they need more, they need some star power there. Because I don't think they've done, they did enough in that movie for them to go out and just do a sequel by themselves. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, to me, then I, if that's, if that's the case, and that's what the studio is thinking, and I'm not saying that you're saying that, Joel, but if the studio is thinking that, I would say Birds of Prey was a failure then. Because the whole point of the movie was to make them strong enough to where they didn't need Harley going forward. Yeah, well, that's why I think they did fail in that regard. Because I think it didn't do enough financially. Got beat up a lot because of assholes. But we both thought it was a good movie. And it critically yeah. was a good movie. And it was yeah. a good movie. But it didn't get enough of a push. Like, it didn't, it didn't bring the birds. It, Harley was too much a face of that movie. Then so we don't we didn't to me learn enough about the birds of prey themselves. I would love to see just the birds of prey movie, just them too. So I would say, <laughs> I would say, and I I even feel comfortable speaking for you. I I would say, me and you felt very comfortable with birds of prey getting their own movie with no Harley mm-hmm. Quinn. We yes, felt as though it was strong enough to. I mean, albeit I always Renee Montoya that. should have <laughs> never been part of the team, but no. me and you felt very strongly about their future and. Ultimately, me and you said this from the jump, Joel. We never felt as though Warner Brothers uh, completely had faith in this movie. Um, we kind of felt like they were tippy toeing. It was kind of like, eh, we'll let you do it. Half in, half out. I don't really believe in it you. It was R. Right. Um, I get it. I get what they were trying to do. Um, but you got to realize also where the money's at. And if you're a girl gang movie, um, maybe R wasn't the best idea when you're trying to bring girls in. And that's what the Birds of Prey should have probably done, of bringing all the little girls in to, like, I want to be just like them. And the problem is it's hard to do that with Harley, even though Harley is very much a draw for the little, you know, for young girls, uh, especially nowadays. I mean, she's definitely a reformed character for sure, but still uh, not the best role model. But I love the Black Canary in that movie. I love the Huntress in that movie. They went with, like I said, uh, my biggest issue with that movie was really the, the clothing choices. And now they're, they, 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 the fucking, the concept art came out of like the other options they had, and like those were better options. Like, why did you not do that costume or that costume in the concept art? But you know, whoever was in charge of making those decisions decided to go in a different direction, and we got what we got. But you know, to me, those to me they didn't stand out well enough with right. their costumes. Their costumes just did. I think they they kind of fell flat. Certain characters looked fine, but I think they didn't they didn't go in enough on the look of the classic characters for them to be recognized, at least the, the comic book fans are like, I imagine Black Canary in my head, I want to see Black Canary on the screen no matter who you cast it, she has a certain look, you know what I mean? Yeah. They did, yeah. A, de- they did a decent job, but they didn't go all the way in. Huntress too, they, they did an okay job with her costume, they could have done better and you saw in the concept part <laughs> Harley too, what the fuck were they trying with that golden overalls? What was that? <laughs> I don't know. They were Whatever. trying too hard to be different and that's me, really what it was to me honestly joel what i hate the most about them trying to make superheroes mainstream is that they're trying to appeal to a larger audience when you never have to like think about blade blade if you've read blade comics and new blade it was so accurate to a t albeit he didn't have a british accent outside of that it was accurate it looked like blade <laughs> right, <laughs> he had a right. whole new black get up that was never part of his uh, arsenal no he looked completely but, different but I will say Wesley Snipes' version of Blade transcended to what we now view Blade to be. Just like uh, Samuel Jackson's Nick Fury transcended what we uh, know Nick Fury to be. So to me, 
when you take liberties, they either have to be a home run or just be accurate. <laughs> like, yeah. like that. That's all I'm saying. Like, but Blade, Blade wasn't a big character, so they could afford to take liberties. Like, no, but like so many people went to the movies to watch Blade that didn't know Blade was a comic book character. Right. <laughs> Whereas we knew going to this movie, these were comic book characters, and there are fans of these characters. So it's like one of those things, like, you got to hit in certain areas. Like, Black Canary is not a hard costume to hit, and the fact that you didn't hit it, it's kind of disappointing. <laughs> like, right. not a hard costume to hit at all. And no. You kind, of, you kind of avoided it almost altogether, which is crazy. To be honest uh, with you, none of their costumes is hard to do whatsoever. Like, legit. No, not at all. Not, not at all. Not, like, look, if Feige can make the Avengers look fresh out of the comics, you can make street-level heroes look better. Like, right. come on. <laughs> like, come on now, really? Yeah. Um, black, black Mass looked the best of all of them. Oh, a hundred percent. And what's funny is, Joel, I was watching Daredevil the other day, and I was thinking to myself, as much as I didn't have a problem with what his costume looked like, I still to this day have no idea why they didn't just go um, comic accurate. Just give him yeah. his his leather costume where he didn't even need to. Over. Not leather, but yes, not leather. I, I'm, not leather. I'm sorry. I, I almost I shot you. I'm sorry. I didn't it's, mean. Um, go ahead. But there are versions of the costume you see, like there's certain like people that draw statues, like they mold the statues. Those there's some beautiful versions of that costume that could have been done in place of what they gave us. Like I didn't hate that costume either, and uh, and I've, I'm more rewatching it right now. Like I, I did the first two seasons of Daredevil, I went through Defenders, and I'm gonna watch Punisher next because I'm doing like a shortened version instead of watching everything. I'm just gonna watch Daredevil Punisher, you know. Um, and the costume is not my favorite, but it doesn't look terrible, you know. It has more like especially the mask did an okay job. Well, even though they gave him a nose and Daredevil doesn't necessarily have a nose, cuts around it. Um, but the suit itself. It's not terrible, but it could have been better. Could yeah. It definitely been better, for sure. Yeah. Um, and it's crazy because I only felt like that with Daredevil and Iron Fist. Uh, yeah, they didn't even give Iron Fist a costume. They didn't. They didn't. And what um, bothers me more, after watching Defenders again for, like, the third time, um, they left it open for him at the end of that show to have a costume because it was basically, like, Daredevil handing the torch over to him for, to be the defender of Hell's Kitchen now, um, or New York in general. Uh, and he could have ended with a with a costume accurate to himself. I'm out. But you want to you know? know what's worse, Joel? We got a flashback where he yeah. had the mask on. So it was yeah. like you're getting even closer to us finally seeing him in the costume. And then yeah. they were kind of like, oh, nope. We're, we're no nope. longer doing Netflix Marvel. Nope. We're <laughs> saving it for the third season that we're never getting. That we're That's never it. getting, right. <laughs> so stupid. So stupid. Um, all right. The last bit of news that we got here. Um, is what me and Joel have been waiting for. Uh, a sequel to Sonic the Hedgehog is in the works. The sequel will reteam with the filmmakers, uh, with Jeff Fowler directing and Pat Casey and Josh Miller writing the script. Um, me and you have been waiting for this news. We assumed it was coming. We hope. Um, <laughs> but we've been just waiting to hear it. Uh, and now we heard it. And I'll speak for myself and let you go. I'm excited. I cannot wait to get more info. I want knuckles. I want tails. Can't wait to see how fat Dr. More tails, more yes. Um, or if even Je uh, Jim Carrey even comes back. Um, yes. Cause yes. we know he is not too fond of sequels. Um, right. So, I mean, there's just so much that I cannot wait for, but Joel, how excited are you? Very excited. Cause that was one movie I wanted it to do well so bad because it's my favorite video game character probably of all time is Sonic the Hedgehog. You know, I grew up loving Sonic, playing Sonic. I wanted to be Sonic. Tell fucking much I loved Sonic. Um, to the point where the, now that we're old enough and they're making movies about it, I was just hoping that it would be a good movie because I didn't want it to be a trashy-ass movie. And to be fair, we got our first glimpse of him and we were all worried <laughs> because... Very. That first design was not pretty at all. And that trailer wasn't a terrible trailer, but he looked horrendous. So it was like, oh, what the fuck is that? That was the first time the fans went over the, the, the studio. So before we got the Snyder Cut officially acted, uh, they went back to the drawing board on designing Sonic, and they fixed him. He looked fucking fantastic when they came back. And they, look, they, they earned that whatever money they did make because of that redesign. They earned it because he looks fucking fantastic. When you watch the movie, it was so much better with the redesign than what they had previously. 
And I don't know who fucking approved the first time, but they should be shot. <laughs> no, but no, 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 no. <laughs> the original design was bad. Um, that's like you look through Hollywood. You're like, how does this get approved? You know that looks terrible. How? Um, and but yeah, I'll, people care. That's why people do care. And I'll say this. I'll say this. Me and you walked out loving the story. Yeah. Me and you fun. walked out both wanting to play Sonic. Sure ultimately, we Sonic. Both, ultimately, we both bought a Sonic game. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I mean, look how well Sonic looked was only rivaled by how well Tails looked. Yeah, um, Tails were great. And when you saw Tails, and me and you freaked out, because, like, you very easily could have just showed Tails, he said something, and then you cut to black. You mm -hmm. showing the Tails separate and him flying mm -hmm. was like, all right, you knew how important that was, and you wanted to show us, hey, we messed up with the design, we didn't mess up with the execution of these characters. And it was just so refreshing to see it. Me and you jumped out of our – we were so excited to see him. Yeah, um, I was very we, excited. We can't wait to see what comes next because you ultimately have to assume uh, is Knuckles. Uh, we're we getting so. Tails, so we assume Knuckles is next. And Joel's yeah. very okay with never seeing Shadow. Uh, <laughs> well, no rush. There's no rush. <laughs> um, no, but in all seriousness, um, no, we, we were very pleased with that movie. We had no issues with it, none. And usually I have an issue about a romance or something. I had none. I still yeah. to this day have none. Um, I, it was flawless to me. It, it did what it needed to do. Um, I, and that's all me you ever asked for. Yep. I, I agree 100%. One of those movies. It's one, I don't buy a lot of movies unless it's comic book driven. I would buy some. Oh, Ooh, for sure. Because I would love to have it at home. For sure. Um, and I will say this last news, uh, Joel, I thought would be fun to talk about because I thought you would enjoy it. And that yeah. is Ian McShane and Lance uh, Reddick are in talks to reprise their roles in the John Wick spinoff Ballerina, which yeah. is reported back in May. Uh, well, we're in May. I don't know why I can't put back in May. But it <laughs> was reported that Chloe Grace Moretz is being eyed for the main role. Now, yes. I will say this. Chloe is a gifted actress. I put her, I was telling T, I put her with uh, Anna Kendrick and um, uh, the chick from Twilight. Um, if you follow Chloe's uh, career after Kick-Ass, she has some solid movies that she's really good acting in. Um, but I think her claim to fame is action. It's what she's really oh, good at. Girl. Um, she's hit girl. Like she, It doesn't yeah. matter what she does in life. She'll always be hit girl. Um, so to me, why not show people a more adult version of Hit Girl? Uh, For sure. So, I mean, when I heard this, I'm like, John Wick? Chloe? Yes, that's a pairing. Like, that's a pairing. The um, like, to me, the only other casting for this movie that I thought would be just completely sp uh, spot on because you would love to see John Wick interact with her is yeah. if you got Angelina Jolie to be in a John Wick movie. Uh, yeah. as a How does that not happen? Yeah. <laughs> um, no, it probably won't. I'm just saying, like, It'd someone for cool. Elk uh, would be just yeah. super awesome. Um, but, no, I'm really excited about these two guys coming back. Um, hopefully they come back for the Continental show that's coming out on Stars. also. Um, I never thought I'd be interested in hearing more about a hotel till the Continental. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, Can't wait for the Continental. Right, but what are your thoughts on those two coming back and the idea of Chloe possibly uh, being the, uh, uh, the ballerina? Yes, I'm down. I mean, I love the John Wick world. That's another series I'd buy. Like I'd buy the trilogy. Obviously, there's more coming, and ballerina being a spinoff and having them—they're part of the Continental. Uh, I'm, of course, they're part of that extended universe. So I would love to see them interact with the ballerina in some capacity. Who is this ballerina? What does she do? How does ballerinas fit? Like, how does that work? Uh, we know that they, John Wick has a connection to them in some capacity. And it's just, I'm very curious to see how that all works out, honestly. So, uh, yeah, the, the Chloe, like you said, Chloe is, is the original hit girl, and she was a killer little girl. So now she can be a killer little woman. <laughs> Yeah, no, I cannot wait. I cannot wait for this, Joel. I just honestly want to see more from the John Wick world. Uh, it's so intriguing. And it is. It is. it's it the is. one franchise that we've seen in a long time um, that could actually span off more than just the main character. 
um, because it's a whole world. It's like it's like the MCU, but with John Wick. Like you yeah. legit could span so many movies with so many different actors and actresses uh, that it's has like, nothing to do with John Wick. It's like basically uh, what would what would like if you played Assassin's Creed for people that watch it that play Assassin's Creed wonder what would Assassin's Creed be in real life? That would be Assassin's Creed. Bro. <laughs> yeah, no, I have no disagreements with that whatsoever. That's exactly like not real it. life, modern day because everything's in the past. You know what I mean? Modern yeah. day, that's basically what that would look like. No, I completely agree with you. Um, but all right, that's pretty much all me and Joel got for you guys this week. Last thing I will ask you, Joel, because I know people will be upset if I don't um if I don't say this. Uh, we're getting some news that PS Five is um dropping some uh some news could be game news. Ultimately, everyone has their fingers crossed. Spider Man is at the top of their list. Um, what are some follow up games you would like to see PS Five announce for its release? Man, there's so many. Uh, a sequel to God of War, the new God of War that came out with the Norse mythology one, because that first one was amazing. Uh, another Uncharted with um, with Nathan Drake, because I love Nathan Drake. He's one of the one of the best video game characters ever created. So, even though he basically retired at the end, uh, is he really though? <laughs> That's how I look at it. Um, Spider Man, of course, that was that was a like game of the year when it came out. Uh, it's definitely set up for a sequel. Give me more Spider-Man for sure. Um, looking at it now, I'm like, oh, uh, we'll probably see some Valhalla shit. Because why not? You know, they already announced that. Um, what else? Uh, we got some uh, Last of Us 2. Well, that's going to be out beforehand. Unless if they, they want to show it to us on a PS5 engine, cool. But I don't know. I, I really want I have to think about it. What else could they do? I definitely, I think you said it already, but I definitely want another Uncharted, even though I don't even have Charted. PlayStation. Uncharted uh, some shit. Yeah, it's awesome. I honestly, like, what I would actually prefer, Joel, is to see them spin off. Um, I want to see them spin off. That. That's, that's <laughs> well, obviously better than, than that. Um, but ultimately, <laughs> I kind of feel like, um, people will only get on board of Nathan Drake, but for so long before it's kind of like, all right, he has an age, and it's like game 30. Um, <laughs> can we get, like, uh, a son or something? Well, at the end of it, uh, Uncharted 4, spoilers, he has a daughter. So it's, she, she's a teenager or whatever when, at the end of that, that movie, and he doesn't look much older, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, but him and his, and his girl, and then, of course, his daughter, at the end of it. So if you want to make a family game where it's not it's not just him, it's them, all of them, all three of them, going out on adventures, that would be cool. But they did do a spinoff right after Uncharted 4 with these two girls that, I don't know, it, it didn't appeal to me because I don't know them, and I've known Nathan for four games. It's just weird to go to a different character I don't know. Um, and I'm, I don't think I didn't know them. I think they were introduced in Uncharted 4. I just didn't care. <laughs> so it's like they have done spinoffs in the past it just didn't do as well as i know and they probably wanted on uh, if they do in charter again i would i would really hope to see nathan back yeah um all right so we just got some breaking news joel breaking oh. breaking breaking news right now yes and the breaking news is um hold on shit i just lost it the breaking news is Disney has plans to use Grand Admiral Thrawn in live action, but no further details as to when or what series he might appear. Is it a rumor or is it uh, from a legit? No, this is definitely a, a rumor, rumor, rumor. Uh, from where? Full the Illuminati? Full circle. Yeah, but full circle is just like us. They, they get it from other people. Go into full circle. Okay, got you. <laughs> All right, I'm into full circle, and it looks like they got it from – Oh, wait, shit. That's just their article. Hold on. All right. Looks like they got it from Insider Daniel Richmond. Oh, da Daniel RPK. Oh, that's good. That's good source then. <laughs> yeah. he's, he's a good insider. So look at that. That's crazy because I'm going to be doing the Star Wars show after this. So they'll be really excited because we've been talking about that. Grand about Animal Throne. Like uh, There's a new Throne book. Thrawn. They just announced it. That's what Dakota was talking about. Dakota was saying, because um, I, don't, I don't read the books. I, I don't have the temperament to do so. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't read <laughs> so, the books either. I mean, read some of the comic books, but that's about it. I don't read the, the book books. Yeah, I read the Starkiller comics uh, 
that I remember. But um, no, so this is really good news, man. Uh, mainly because I will say this to the day I die. I thought Thrawn was in Last Skywalker. I thought that's who um, the guy from Logan was playing. Um, ultimately, he was the farthest thing from it. But I thought that's who he was. And I got so excited because I'm like, he looks like him. You just make him blue. And he looks just like him. Um, and then obviously that did not pan out. But um, how excited are you about Thrawn? Because uh, does your your knowledge of Thrawn only span from seeing him in Rebels? Okay. Yeah. I mean, I've heard about his past because I watched uh, Jedi Council through mm-hmm. Collider for the longest time. And they, they know him from, like, Legends books. Uh, so when they announced him for Rebels is when I that's, – that's how I know of him is through Rebels. Uh, and he, and it's with him that where Ezra got lost. It was, that's right. how it ended, two of them. Yep. So maybe that's where we see him because <laughs> we see that Ezra. Could we be. see, we that see could be. I don't know. You know. Maybe he never got a chance to kill. You know, we don't know. We, they're, they're both lost in space. So. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I'm excited to see a live action at Grand Admiral. So yeah, for sure. How old is this cocksucker at this point? He's old. I mean, I, I really don't think he ages. If I'm being completely honest with you, he he's always just really been slow. blue. <laughs> 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 like he's never looked old blue or young blue. He's just blue. Um, he's like Cad Bane. Like you, no one knows how old Cad Bane is. Yeah. Um, but no, I'm really excited for this. I would love to see him interact with the Mandalorian at some point. Um, mm-hmm. I think that'd be a really good follow up villain. Um, so this is just really fun. Be. Be this cool. is just really fun news. I cannot wait to dive into this uh, on the Star Wars episode. Um, I will ask you: Did you care anything about Chris Evans' um, statement about probably never coming back as Captain America? I can read the direct quote. If you and know. I saw it. Um, did I care? I mean, it was, I don't disagree with him. I think the way it ended was perfectly. I, I don't know if you can, he's right. You come back, you kind of, you just, you dilute it. Uh, and it's like, if you do come back, you got to wait. I think you got to give it time. It's way too early. Oh, to yes. to come back. Yeah. But uh, the only reason I don't think it, um, I don't maybe think in the future. Only reason I don't think it taints anything is me and you specifically said, um, obviously not next season, maybe not even the season after, but maybe if CW is still around uh, in three years, we 100% want Stephen Amell to come back. Um, like, we don't want him gone forever. Like, can I be honest with you? Watching the crossover, hearing um, when Batman uh, – uh, Batwoman, I'm sorry, uh, they're all teleported inside the the, D- the DOA or whatever that's called on Supergirl. D-O. Uh, DEO. And she takes off her mask after Kara says, you can trust me. Do you remember what Oliver said? Like when he saw that it was it was uh, Cat Kane, he goes, "Oh, figures." I'm like, "Oh, I wanted more of that interaction because like she could <laughs> legit tell Oliver, Batman exists. You weren't the first. Like I <laughs> I love that over a beer. Her yeah. just kind of telling him like, you're not the originator. <laughs> like, <laughs> not even close. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, there's so many interactions I would love to see. Like Felicity. Uh, talking to what's his name um, from Batwoman, Felicity, yeah. him, and uh, and Cisco, the three of them getting together oh, yeah. would That'd be, be freaking epic. So there's just so many different things that you would like to see kind of team up. Um, so I'm like, you know, you hope that one day you get to see them back together. Um, but with Captain mm-hmm. America, I can tell you right now, once the Fantastic Four and the X Men get introduced into the MCU, I 100% want Iron Man and Cat back at some point. Um, I, I don't care how tainted mean. it might be. I want. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I don't disagree. I mean, that was my biggest fear going into Endgame. Was like they're gonna kill off Cap or Iron Man, and they end up doing kind of both, even though technically Cap is alive. Um, and I'm like never gonna see them interact with the X Men or the Fantastic Four, and they're gonna. Well, that seems wrong. <laughs> that just, yeah, that seems completely wrong. It just uh, it irked me. I mean, I have to live with it, but it bothered me to my soul. I'm like, I want to see Iron Man interact with Reed Richards. That's, That's what true. I'm saying. That, that right there is it. the true science bros. Those are the real yeah. science bros right there. Yeah, um, I would love to see that. Uh, Iron Man and, and Reed Richards. So I'm like, I definitely want to see that. But to me, Joel, me and you view the superhero movies completely differently than an average person. They don't know who these people are. Right. <laughs> but to me and you, to me and you, there is no such thing as tainted in, in comic book world. There is rushing it, but there is no such thing as tainting it. They these people always come back. back all the time. Right. They always come back. <laughs> they did this a Cap years. I mean, a couple of years ago, Cap was old. They gave, so he gave Falcon the shield and Falcon was Captain America for a good four or five years. 
That guess yeah. who's cap right now? Steve Rogers. Yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? And but I will say this, Joel, where my my trepidation a little bit with Chris Evans coming back will start to kind of take uh take heed will be yeah. if when Winter Soldier, uh Falcon and Winter Soldier comes out. If I'm blown away by Sam's performance as like the quote unquote new cap, right. I won't want you at any point to truly rush it, especially if Chris isn't really looking to come back. I right. am okay with Reed interacting with this new version of Cap. Of I'll be fine me. with that. Yeah, but yeah. what I will not accept is Reed Richards interacting with Ironheart and there's no Tony. Like, yeah. that is that – no. That, that Unless Tony is the AI. <laughs> Unless he's the AI. I could live with him being the AI. I legit could live with that. Um, mm. And I think Robert Downey Jr. would be fine going into a booth every day. And, and just doing voiceover. Roles. Right. Um, so I, I, I would grow okay with that, but to me, um, Falcon as Cap is a lot more acceptable than Ironheart as the new Iron Man. Right. Um, you know, because to me, yeah, well, me and you have always said this, uh, especially when uh, Feige got the rights back. We said X Men vs. the Avengers should definitely be on 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 the agenda. Like that should be something that you work towards. Something yeah, exactly. And yes. I don't want the Avengers to be led by anyone but Stark and Cap. <laughs> so it's gonna be different, not that but... kind of battle. Yeah, it's going to be different, but we'll definitely have a new leader soon for the Avengers. So yep. I'm just going to have to live with it. All right, my last question. We're getting out of here. Uh, <laughs> now that you've seen the whole video of yeah. LeBron and Michael Jordan as Knicks, who did you gain more respect for, Jordan or uh, LeBron coming out of that? I got to give LeBron all the respect for not putting up a fit and taking the back seat to Michael Jordan. <laughs> the <whole> career. <laughs> uh, he did get one MVP, though, um, towards the end there um, over, over Jordan. But um, it was just funny because he ended up retiring and Jordan got another – he played, stayed there, got to the finals again, and then lost again. But still, they both ended up having nine championships, which is ridiculous to have so nine let championships. Let me ask you this. Would you take nine championships, but the Knicks never make another finals for the rest of our lives? Or would you like to, to be or, or would you like the Knicks to be competitive and win championships maybe maybe every so often? Uh, but yeah. they're always competitive. Or would you just take those nine in 13 years and say, that's it. Uh, I mean, I would love to take nine in 13 years, but I, to, to take it in, in, in small doses throughout several decades, I, I'll take that too. Because you're always relevant in winning a championship. You're always there. If, if you're going to be alive that long, during right. my lifetime, you want to win nine and never win again, I won't be allowed to see it. I don't give a fuck. You gave me my nine. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you say that because I remember my cousin asked me, he's like, what are you going to do, like, the day Brady's no longer, like, the quarterback of the Patriots? And I told him with a straight face, I don't care. We got six all in my lifespan. <laughs> like, we had six in my lifespan, went to nine. I am okay for the next decade if they win yeah. nothing. I'm okay. I got my six. If the you Knicks won one, if the Knicks won one and didn't win another one for another 40 years, I'd be okay. That one would mean more than anything. So I'm like, yeah. I'd be okay. <laughs> I'd rest yeah. easy at night. <laughs> yeah, I, go, I mean, I'd be frustrated, but yeah, for sure. I got one. <laughs> I, got one. I got one. I got one. And it would be special to see who they got it with. That, to me, makes the biggest difference is who you got it with. Like, the yeah. Warriors will look back and appreciate winning with Harrison Barnes and Bogut more than they did winning it with Durant. Any, anyway, and if you got nine championships, you would probably be the greatest – team that ever existed in nine that time 13 span. years jordan yeah. did six over the course of what 15 yeah so, imagine. so i'm like jesus nine and 13 come on there would be the, no one would ever be able to make fun of the knicks again no you couldn't <laughs> they wouldn't know but they, they wouldn't they wouldn't be able to nine championships man joel It'd can you funny. just picture us being a prime time story on espn <laughs> and it not being because we suck yeah, it would be nice. It would be nice. Oh, it would be great. What a to life. not be the butt of jokes for several years. 
uh, nine championships would definitely change uh, the look. We'd have a whole bunch of new bandwagon fans. We can kick off the boat all the time. <laughs> Brooklyn would be empty every night. <laughs> it's funny that in the simulation it was during Brooklyn's run. Like, with the, yeah, they didn't make any noise. No, nope. <laughs> they were never ever in the finals during that time period. <laughs> nope. but that's the pendulum that LeBron and Jordan would swing. That yeah, doesn't matter who insane. You had. Yeah, yeah. Just but all, right, all right, this is a fun episode. I'm glad you saw that video while we did the show. Yeah, it's um, funny. Because I knew you would think it was just hilarious. Um, because it's like... Getting them in Nick jerseys was another we- like surreal moment. Like, what the fuck am I looking at? <laughs> and seeing their numbers, because he said at the beginning of the video, he didn't choose who to give 23 to, so he just went alternate numbers for both. Okay. Um, and it's funny because oh, true. they were both were 23. Yeah, they did. They did. And it's funny because you might have more kids remember LeBron for six than 23. Um, yeah. and no one, he was going to change it again to six. He was, but the NBA wouldn't let him. They were like, we make too much you money got, off of you. You got it. Yeah. He, <laughs> wait, he got to wait a year to switch it. If he wanted to do that, we'll see like if he when, does. It was like when Kobe went 24, like David Stern was like, I don't like this Kobe. No one's going <laughs> to want that. And then he transcended 24, and it was like, okay, all right. Yeah, well, I works. see what you did there. <laughs> I see what you did there. One over Jordan, I see. Yeah. Well, um, he had Jordan with the 4-5, went won all those champions, and then LeBron with the number six. So, yes. Different, to, but know, interesting. to know that we retired 45 and six in our banners meant everything. <laughs> 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 no more Chris stops talk at number six. It's uh, LeBron. LeBron number um, six. But, no, it, it definitely was weird for us because it's like we spent our lifetimes hating both of these players. <laughs> so, it's like to know I've that you won us nine. <laughs> Good bulk of money. Yeah, you made yeah, up. You give me nine championships, I'll forgive you for anything. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. Nine. Yeah, please. Two, and I would say, yeah, no, I love you. Um, <laughs> <It's funny. laughs> you won it. It's like, it's like, I don't hate you anymore. It's weird. It just it disappeared. Um sure. But all right, man, I know how much you hate being on these things for too long. I'm yeah, but you managed right, right to the fucking f- five o'clock mark. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to let you go, man. This is a fun episode. I'm glad we got to do it. Uh, hopefully, we get a lot more news heading into next week uh, so we can do another one. Hopefully. We'll see what happens. All right. Until then. Peace.